Oh, all right. <clears throat> so I now am going to hopefully, hopefully get a rental car for the day so that I can head over to the old Mayan ruins, which are about an hour and a half outside of town. I got my backpack filled with everything I need for the day. Came here two years ago and it was super awesome. Probably one of the cooler ruins that I've seen. One of the reasons being is that it is about as big as the size of Chichen Itza. It was like the main one that probably everyone, including yourself, know about. But there, at least when I was there, there was no one there. Absolutely no one there. And it's just this huge archeological, archeological uh, park or, you know, set of ruins in the jungles uh, outside of uh, Chitamal. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be really cool. I'm really excited to get back and see everything again. Also just walking around here on the highway. It's quite a ASMR, if you will, experience. You just get all like, really all the sounds and the smells. The sounds and the smells specifically. It's like a mix of like smoky, dirty, but then also delicious food with little hints of like, you know, dust and whatever. Good smells overall though. It's a stick, let's go. All right, so I got my car. Let's go, and it's a stick ship. I've been driven to stick it so long, it's so nice. Oh yeah, boy, let's go. It's been so long. So basically all I had to do to start this journey was um, just go to the go to the highway, rent this car, and it was about um, so it, it was what was it? It was a uh, twelve hundred pesos, which for the day, which basically comes out to about fifty, I think fifty or sixty dollars. I'm doing the math right, which honestly is not so bad. It's about the same, if not a little less than if we were to rent a car for the day in the states. And you know, this is a pretty decent car. It's a Chevy. I uh, don't know the, the model, but it's a, it's a nice, it's good. And it's a stick shift, which is great for at least uh, me, because I like driving a stick. And uh, So that's another thing is uh, just to be aware of if you do rent a car, just make, you know, if you don't know how to drive stick, um, you know, ask or just make sure, because I didn't realize it until after I'd signed papers and I was about to leave and I was like, oh, it's stick. Good thing I can drive a stick. <laughs> So it didn't matter, but yeah, so if you can't drive a stick for some reason, then just make sure you do that. So then, yeah, all you do after that is uh, follow the highway like you're going to Chitamal, and then you follow it for a little while and then turn off to turn off the road to an offshoot, follow that highway for a little bit more, and then you kind of go through a couple little towns, go through some winding roads, and then you turn out here to the country roads, and it's just single lane, single lane, um, roadways and it's really pretty out here honestly it's not a lot of people out here it's pretty rural uh, looks like a lot of farmland and just you know empty space and wildland so that's pretty cool overall the trip out here takes about, uh, about an hour and a half from Bacalar and then another hour and a half back so just driving you would have to account for at least a three hour day or a three hour three hour drive total there uh, round trip i'll make a note of the car rental place in the description below all right well we made it and we'll go all right here we go all right so i have just arrived here to the uh the lost mayan ruins as it were this is a uh, some of the old ruins and outskirts of Bacalar. Hola, buenas tardes. Necesito un boleto para. Okay. Sí. Algo más. Todo bien. Gracias. Okay, so I don't know how to pronounce that name. I really do not want to, uh, I don't want to butcher it, say it wrong. This is one, one of the archeological sites of this old Mayan city here in, uh, basically in the countryside of, of uh, Bacalar. So, uh, 
probably as you can see here, I'm just walking to uh, one of the first temples here, and it is massive, massive, massive. It's pretty sick, and there's just all these trees around. It's so beautiful, and that's the thing. There's no one here. There's nobody here. Absolutely nobody. I walked up, and it seems like it's free. It seems like it's free, at least here. I just walked up, signed a book, and I saw maybe it, four other names. Four. Four names. There may be, there's maybe four people here right now. Maybe. But I mean, look at that. This is basically the size of Chichen Itza in terms of area. And from what I've been told, for those of y'all who have been to Chichen Itza or know about it, it's probably one of the most famous archeological sites in the world. So it's always, always super busy with tours and people and it's just, you know. I mean, look at this. Look at this. This is wild. And we just got this right here. We can climb up it. We can climb up it too. So let's uh, let's get out here and climb on it a little bit. Eh? Wow, wow. Okay, here we go. Let me go to the top. Wow. Yeah, I can't imagine building this. I mean, this is crazy. Out here in the middle of the forest too, huh? You're out here in the middle of the forest. This is this is nuts. I have to go back and read exactly what it was they think this was, but I think it was a temple. That's what they're saying. Look at this. Wow. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. really quite something spectacular just if you thought if you could you imagine if you came upon this if you say you're European sep settler or something and you came upon this in the middle of the forest in the middle of the jungle and you just saw this massive structure made out of stone perfectly perfectly engineered and just standing out here in the middle of the jungle. So crazy. And I still can't get over the fact that I am literally, I'm literally by myself here. It's so quiet. Just the birds. The last time I was here, there was monkeys. There's monkeys jumping all up, uh, all up in the, all up in the trees there. So if I get lucky, maybe we'll, I'll see some monkeys here. But this is crazy. And it stood the test of time. This is probably, you know, hundreds of years old. Definitely hundreds of years old. And it's still here. It's just stood the test of time. This is so wild. It's so wild. Yeah, wow. Well, it looks like I just found a monkey friend. It's all, dude. Yeah, they're here. They, he just jumped across the tree. I, I heard something rustle in the trees and I look up and there's a monkey. I shouldn't stand right under him though because I don't want to get, uh, I don't want to get his uh, special presence from, up, from above, if you know what I mean. But yeah, he, see, they're chilling. They're here. If you're ever in this area of Mexico, you need to come and visit these ruins. Because even from two years ago, there's nobody here. And you know it's very nice and peaceful um not just because there's nobody here it's just cause it's a it's probably a, a a way lesser known way lesser known archaeological site of the mayan culture but it's again just as just as big uh it's a, it's a huge site this is just one there's another site uh, about another two kilometers um to the west I believe and it's also wild too because it really just being here alone really puts really kind of gets you into the shoes of again what those explorers or even other ancient Maya that 
you know, weren't communicating with each other that you know, found these old ruins here in the middle of the forest. It's so wild to just be here by yourself and you just come up on it and you see this massive structure in the middle of the jungle. It's, it's quite an experience, you gotta say. One of the reason I really love this area outside of Bacalar, why you need to come, why you need to come and visit. Wow, this building right here behind me uh, is known as the building of captives. This is crazy. Wow. Look at this whole site right here. So you got a temple over there. A big one over there you can't see because of the trees and there's people working on it right now. And I didn't even know about this until I was shown this the last time I was here about two years ago. And I was shown this. Well, for that, I would have not known anything about this. My advice is, you know, definitely come visit here because it's very beautiful and there's a lot of, you know, stuff to learn about the Mayan culture. Do it with grace and come here with the, the right mindset to come here to learn, come here to experience. Just me being here right now, it's very, very peaceful. So another thing that is really cool about um, these tablets that have that explain kind of what every building is around here. Not only do they have it in Spanish and English, they have it in the indigenous Mayan uh, language. You can see here, and all in the indigenous language. Okay, so I'm at one of the plaques right now, just kind of reading up on uh, what this building is right here. So this is actually it looks to be a viewing area for dances down here in the plaza. So we watched over a thousand years ago, which is crazy old. The fact that this has been here for almost 2,000 years is mind blowing to me, and it's still in this great condition. Just, yeah, wow, so wild. And um, these guys over here are uh, doing some work to restore and just upkeep with this big massive temple right here which I really wish I could climb but I don't want to disturb them because they're building or they're fixing it but I mean look at that that is just I know there's another temple across the way uh, to the west there's a sign for it on the way in so I'm gonna go possibly check that out see what, see what it's all about I also made the mistake of not bringing my phone charger with me so that was great um, and it's not too hard to get back from what I remember it's not that many curves it's a pretty pretty straightforward drive it's just you know having that back up and having it is much easier than uh, trying to just navigate on your own but it's possible I could do it so but I turned everything off phones off it's a grid at least so um, no more wasting battery until I really really need it that was the first site done and unreal so wild I mean other than some of the workers there's no one there and that one plaza right there no one there crazy um, and as you can see from the parking lot just my little car right there my little rental car and no one else all right let's get in and start her up Arrived here in the other one, the other set of ruins here, and it's uh, Kinichina. That is not right, so sorry if I butchered it. I'm really trying, <laughs> but again, just me here in the small little parking lot, a little rental car, a little Chevy. So, this is pretty cool. It has the, the name of it, but also it looks to be a LIDAR picture of the archaeological site. Basically, LIDAR is a, um, a laser scan. It's basically a you know, way more high-tech version of sonar. It uses lasers to 
uh, basically map map the forest floor and the ground and then anything that sticks up above it it accurately maps everything to scale so it's pretty cool so here we are right here here's the other temple and wow yeah look at that this one's huge i forgot how big this one is well okay it's time to climb doing our steps for the day let's go all right it's leg day guys let's go on oh, these steps all these steps are at least a foot high so you really you're really working and they're far apart from each other and they just keep going all the way up so you're really stepping getting your workout in for this view but it's so worth it at the top okay there's a uh, first part done there's the rest of it behind me still got some more but whew, it's nice up here with the breeze yeah all right oh man here we go Oh wow, yeah, just sticking up above. Look at that, we're almost there. Yes, stick up above the tree line and you get to get this beautiful view. Wow, it's even better than I remember. But there's one more, there's one more. I'm gonna vault up here. I'm gonna strap, strap y'all onto the backpack here so y'all can come with me. Going hands free. Okay. Oh, yes. Almost at the top. Oh my god. Woo! Oh yeah. Look at that. Woo! Yeah. Yeah, baby, we made it. Look at that. Woo! Nothing but countryside all around. That is spectacular. Oh my gosh. Ay Dios mio. That is. Wild. They built this, they built this. 330 feet, 330 feet high, they built this. That is wild. Just sticking up above the tree line. And even here, there's nothing. I mean, there's a couple houses and stuff over here, but it looks like mainly farmland. And not even farmland even, it just looks like there's nothing out here, which is great. It's like pure countryside, pure Mexican countryside. It looks to be untouched from any kind of development even rural, but yeah, wow, unreal. It's another big mountain over there, it's pretty cool. Just remember, whenever you come down here to Bacalar, or around in the Yucatan, uh, near Chitamal, make sure to come and visit this spot, because it is one of the best that I've seen. So the whole experience is 